Hey guys, Serial Killer Porridge here, back at it again with another amazing video. <laughs> I wish. Uh, as you can clearly see, I have a new chair. Should I do a video on that? I don't know. You, you're seeing um, my setup tour, which is going to go up before this video sometime this week. Anyways, a new monitor setup, a new keyboard, a new mouse mat, and most importantly, sort of a new PC with a part from a company two years ago I would have never considered even going for it. Yep, yeah, that's right, I bought a MacBook. This <laughs> <I'm> so funny. <laughs> I can't think. <coughs> Anyways, jokes aside, I have moved into the field of Team Red. That is right, I have bought the equivalent to a nuclear reactor for, for my PC. This video is basically on why I've switched from Team Blue to Team Red. Three years ago, four if you count 2018 as a year so far, I purchased an i7 uh, 4790K from Intel. Um, and you can see it in this video here, sort of. Uh, which, uh, which at the time when I bought it, it was one of the most powerful consumer grade chips that you could get on the market which but sadly within a short time of my purchase of that uh, CPU these new Skylake chips uh, were released um, thus shoving that my new 4790k out of the limelight which is very sad and depressing because I just bought it despite the new and improved chip being out there it was still a powerful chip to have it ran my games perfectly twin with my especially just judging as twin with my 980 ti and before that i had a 970 the 980 ti which i still have now is an amazing card it's still on par with like the, say the 10 1070 and the 1080 sort of but one of the things that i do a lot and which is the reason why these videos are on the site is video editing, rendering, exporting, and all that sort of jazz. Which is, as you can guess, a very CPU intensive sort of job for the computer to do, as well as RAM and choose now that you moved it with Vegas, uh, Premiere Pro and stuff. Uh, the 4790K, when I had it, it coped really well with the low amount of edi editing and rendering I did. Uh, eight threads and four cores really helped with that, definitely, and the high. 4.5 gigahertz clock rate, which is really good. So, that's really the main story of why and when I had my 4790K. It served me well, working it nuts off. And then in the year of 2017, I started to try and up my ante of the quality and time spent on my videos that I uploaded. And I made the decision that after um, the summer of 2017, because um, that with my wages that I earn, I will upgrade the brains of my system to make it competitive in the video editing sort of mark so I can produce and work really well with a high quality PC. Even right now as we speak, my computer is rendering away a video because it's that, it's good enough and it's recording at the same time because what I've done is really good. Um, to be fair, I don't know really what to get. I could have got like the new 6700K or the 7700K, really, but to me, I don't think it would have been a much upgrade. Much of an upgrade. Uh, they were both sort of, if you can say, based off the 4790K and the 4770K, four cores, eight threads, uh, and a clock speed of around four gigahertz, which is higher than what I've got at the moment, but we'll get onto that later. I didn't know really think that the couple of FPS boost in say like uh, 1080p and 1440p games was any really benefit to me because I'm buying a CPU for rendering not gaming and I, I'm still on 1080p not 1440p uh, but I did acknowledge I did understand and acknowledge that the increase from the new the old DDR3 format to the DDR4 format for RAM would have been a sort of really good boost judging as I had sort of just ventured into the Premiere Pro land where it's an editing software that uses a lot more RAM than Vegas which I have been used to 
I spent a long time sort of contemplating for what I really wanted to get, and then I noticed um, a video from Linus about talking about new AMD chips, code name the Ryzen Gen. I was intrigued because AMD hadn't released many chips since uh, they released worthiness since like the bulldozer series, the 600, the 8350 and the 4300. And all the videos I saw online, all the articles I saying online saying low price, low price, high performance, which is the classic AMD sort of thing they try to do, but most of the time it's low price and medium, mediocre performance, like, yeah. Uh, so I was sort of, they were saying that the performance was on par to some of the top Intel chips at half the price, and that was a sort of warning bell in my ear, think, say, th I'm, and I'm thinking, that can't be right at all. Um, but I, then he dropped a performance video, line of tech tips, and oh my god, was I stunned. I read into the new Ryzen chips and draw into the AMD hype chain, the 1800X and the 1700X, uh, with their 1800 and 1700 brothers, were amazing, though. I couldn't justify spending £400 on a chip. Even though I was, before that, thinking about X99. But £400 on a chip, that is a week's wages for me. I wanted to be able to upgrade my system with one week's wages. Then, um, late 2017 summer, when I sort of was thinking about upgrading my computer, I looked around and saw the 1600X. Six cores, 12 threads. It's a beast from Team Red at an uh, amazing, sort of unbeatable price around £195, £180. It was just what I was looking for. Perfect for all the video editing I could possibly imagine. I looked online, all the reviews were really good. Low price, high performance. And I, I went and bought for it. I got paid. I ordered it. It fit right into the budgets because hundred pound for the two hundred pound for the processor, then a hundred odd pound for the motherboard, then a hundred odd pound for the RAM. That was a, that's a four hundred pound budget processor, motherboard, CPU. Instead of spending four hundred pound on processor, then I have to spend even more on the motherboard because I need to get a better motherboard to accommodate that higher performance. Even though what I've got is a very good motherboard, I've got some MSI one. I, can't, I never can remember MSI things. I got it off eBay for £175, which is about $200. Uh, go with a MSI motherboard and 16 gig of Corsair memory. It arrived not shortly after I ordered it. I ordered it sort of last week of the summer holidays and it arrived like the neck within the next three days. And it was really a sort of a sense of nostalgia receiving that chip and putting it in with the, you know how AMD have the pins on the ship instead of the pins on the motherboard. It's sent really lovely sense of nostalgia judging as I started off my gaming career with, with an FX 6300 which I still have in the corner as you can see in my setup video and it was amazing um, to be fair from the get go I did have issues with the laning for the RAM I had to mess around fitting each RAM in different slots because at first because it wasn't ready to boot but easy fix, you just slot, slot, apply boost in BIOS, and I was ready to throw it into work and see what it could get. All I can say is the performance for me was noticeable. Upgrade from the i7 to the FX, no, not FX, 1600X was noticeable. Because, well, it's a fourth gen i7 processor, they're seventh gen now, aren't they? It was far more stable, to be honest. I noticed in like uh, higher performing games like Battlefield, PUBG, Call of Duty, Battlefront, sort of, especially PUBG. Like I was very uneven, sort of 60, 80 FPS, it was sort of really jumpy. And now I get a solid amount of FPS, 80, depending on what map I'm playing. But it re and what was even better, it rendered like a beast. Rendering on it was amazing. Um, 
it's low TDP was good 95 watts which is really low compared to the newer i7 processors which have a, a, a breach in the 150 sort of wattage area uh, but then pff, it wasn't really much because I had just recently purchased a 850 watt power supply uh, though pff, it runs at 3.6 gigahertz which compared to what I had previously had with my 4790k at 4.5 gigahertz it wasn't exactly amazing but the X clock speed wasn't necessary for rendering or gaming because I had the extra extra two cores no it has four more cores not two more cores four more cores than the 4790k and I think it has a higher PC higher cache so yeah I know the diehard PC fans are churning in their graves as I speak as I utter every syllable thinking oh my god he switched from AMD to Intel oh sinner I couldn't care less. I used to be one of those people. Intel's the best, but it's a brilliant CPU worth every single penny and hour I put into it. It was a painless switch and no issues, and I'm really actually genuinely glad of my choice. I've got no regrets. So I hope you enjoyed my reasoning of switching from Team Red, aka AMD, to Team Blue, Intel. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm trying to now upload more now, at least once a week, maybe every Friday, which will be really cool if I can, but oh, yeah, it's a lot of editing and I need to think of topics and script up all this stuff. Anyways, expect new things to come soonish. Leave a like down below and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. Oh, and we hit 110 subs. Round of applause. Thank you, guys.